Good evening, New Beginning Church family and our online family and friends. We are so excited today. You have chosen to join us on tonight. We are praying that God will continue to keep us in the midst of this pandemic, this COVID-19. And we know that God is capable and he's more than able to do so. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, don't be afraid for I am with you. Don't be discouraged for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Y'all, we know that if God doesn't keep us, we cannot be kept. We can't keep ourselves. And I'm going to sing this, this little song, this prayer that says, Keep me, Lord. Keep me, Lord. Keep my mind, my hands, my feet. Lord, keep all of me. Keep me, Lord. Keep me, Lord. This is my earnest plea. Keep me, Lord. Y'all, we just got to pray that God will just continue to keep us regardless of what we're going through. Keep me, Lord. Keep me, Lord. Keep my mind, hands, and feet. Lord, keep all of me. Keep me, Lord. Keep me, Lord. This is my earnest plea. Keep me, Lord. Keep me, Lord. Keep me, Lord. Keep my mind, hands, and feet. Lord, keep all of me. Keep me, Lord. Keep me, Lord. This is my earnest plea. Keep me, Lord. to keep you. Let's go to prayer. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another privilege, another honor. Lord, we thank you, Father God, that only you can keep us. We thank you for keeping us, Lord. We thank you for blessing us and keeping us. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, all that you will do and what you're doing right now. God, we thank you, Father God, for just keeping our heart keeping our minds, keeping us, Father God, all of us, and we pray that you continue to do so. Lord, we ask you to bless us now as we come to study your word. Bless your word to fall on good soil, that men, women, boys, and girls would know that Jesus is real, and Jesus is the only one who can keep us. Bless us now in our study. Bless your word to go forth and fall on good soil. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Yes, Lord, keep us, keep us, Lord, keep us. Keep our hands and our feet. Keep all of us, Father God, keep us. This is our earnest plea. Lord, just keep us, keep us, Lord. Keep me, Lord, keep me, Lord. Keep me, Lord. Lord, keep all of me. Keep all of me. Keep me, Lord. 
Keep me, Lord. Keep me, Lord. Keep me, Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Well, we thank God for who he is and what he's already done. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. Yes, we do. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. Thank you for joining us again here at the New Beginning Church, 4251 Shiramai Road in Houston, Texas. Thank you for joining us at our remote location again on tonight. Tonight is our Bible study night. Every, every Wednesday night at 7.20 p.m. is our Bible study night. <clears throat> tonight, we're in chapter 3 of Philippians. Chapter 3 of Philippians, a very, very interesting book we've been looking through. The Apostle Paul is writing from the Romans jail, and he's thinking about people other than himself. We ought to think about people other than ourselves. So yeah. the Apostle Paul is writing to, to predominantly Christians. He's, he's telling them, I appreciate you. I thank you. I appreciate you being there for me when I needed you. So the Apostle Paul is writing to this church at Philippi, and he has come to chapter 3. He has already identified uh, Timothy and Epaphroditus as two that you can trust and believe in. He's looking forward to sending, Peter, uh, sending uh, Timothy, I mean, and Epaphroditus to be with uh, the Philippian church. So tonight we're looking at chapter 3. We'll cover seven verses in your hearing. Uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Chapter 3 of Philippians chapter 3 of Philippians, verses 1 through 7. He says, Paul says in verse number 1, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. <laughs> he begins it again by telling us to rejoice. He, he tells us to rejoice. He's telling, telling Christians all over the world that you ought to have a rejoicing spirit. You ought to have joy and have joy and have joy again. He says, my brother, you ought to rejoice. He's already said that these things that have already happened to me was for the furtherance of the gospel. He said it is for the furtherance of the gospel. And because it's for the furthering of the gospel, these things that have happened to, to him, as well as the things that happened to us, you shouldn't look down on them as much as you do. Some things that happen to us is for the furthering of the gospel. So Paul says that these things that have happened to me is for the furtherance of the gospel. Verse number three, he says, now I want you to rejoice. You keep having joy and have joy again, and you ought to be rejoicing. Then he says, for me to write the same things to you is not tedious. I'm in a New King James Version. This is not tedious to me, but it is safe for you. It is for you safety. And for you, it is safe. It is safe for you. He's saying that we need to continue to rejoice. Paul has already said in previous verses in the first two chapters that there are some men that are preaching the gospel and they are not preaching unto the Lord Jesus Christ. He says that some of them are preaching because of their selfish gain. They want to gain some things. They, they're preaching for their own good. He also said in previous verses that some of them are preaching so that it will hurt him. <laughs> Paul says some preachers are preaching the gospel not for, for the glory of, of God, not for the glory of Jesus Christ, but they are preaching to hurt Paul. Paul is locked up in prison. They know he's there. They know why he was there, and they know he was there because he's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so he's saying that some preachers are preaching the gospel not for the sake of the gospel being spread, but they are preaching the gospel for the sake of getting back at him. My, my, my. He says some men are, are preaching for the sake of getting back at him, but there is another group that is preaching to the glory of God. And as they are preaching to the glory of God, he says, don't try to stop those who are preaching to the glory of God. Neither should you try to stop those who are preaching for their selfish gain because Jesus Christ is built up. Jesus Christ is edified. The body of Christ is edified and God gets the glory yes. even though. Now here is a very, very popular verse. Verse number two, he says, Beware of dogs. 
Beware of evil workers or evil doers. Beware of the mutilation. For we are the circumcision who worship God in spirit, rejoicing in Jesus Christ and have no confidence in the flesh, though I also might have the confidence might have the confidence in the flesh. If anyone else think he might have confidence in the flesh, I more so have confidence in the flesh. I more so. Let me just stop right there. Paul says, first of all, beware of dogs. Beware of evil doers or evil workers. Beware of the mutilation. Let me just unpack this right here and let you know that Paul is referring to the Judaizers as well as some of the Jews. In Paul's days, the Judaizers, they believed that the flesh, they believed that the works, the works determined your salvation as well as your Christian walk. He says, beware of these, these false teachers because you and I already know that, that they believe that the works that we have, the works that we do, will cause mankind to be saved. He calls them dogs. Now, it wasn't an uncommon thing to call those who were not walking with Jesus Christ dogs because many times the Jews would call the Gentile dogs, meaning that they were uncircumcised and they were not walking with Jesus. But Paul says here, beware the dogs, as he is talking about the Judaizers as well as the Jews. He says, beware of the dogs, beware of the workers of evil or the evil workers. And he says, Be, beware of the mutilation or those who mutilate the body. You see, many people thought that, that because they mutilate the body, that they were walking close to God. You recall in, in, in the book of Kings where, where Elijah was on Mount Carmel. He was there with over uh, 850 prophets from the groves and from Baal. And he was standing there and they were calling on their God, Baal. And as they called on Baal from morning to noon day, he began to joke and act a fool with them. He began to, to contest them. He said, why don't you call him a little louder? Because he may be on a far journey. Why don't you call him a little louder? Because he may be asleep. In other words, he was telling them to call their God Baal a little louder because Baal could be asleep. Baal could be on a far journey. What he was really saying to them is that I serve a God and my God is one, my God is one who will never sleep nor slumber. He says, he says to us that we serve a God that never sleeps nor slumber, but you got to call on your God and he says, call your God a little louder and upon the time that Baal did not answer them on Mount Carmel, they began to mutilate themselves. They began to cut themselves with stones. So here in Philippians chapter 3, uh, verse number 2, he says, beware of dogs. Be, beware of evildoers. Now, these are false prophets. These are men who believe that they cannot be born again unless they do good works. These are men who believe that you can't be born again unless mutilation or cutting or, or damaging yourself or somebody else takes place. He says, beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the mutilation. And then he says, for we are the circumcision." When he talks about the mutilation, what he's saying also is that during that time, it was a physical circumcision that was cut away from the man, this circumcision that, that brought them close to God. He says, whatever you do, don't get caught up in that because we are the circumcision. 
they not only thought that if they cut themselves physically in circumcision, that they would be close to God. And yes, that was the case previously to Jesus coming. So they believed previously to Jesus coming, and it was the case that if they were circumcised, they were getting close to God. But they carried this thought over even after Jesus Christ had come. Now, Paul has come to say to them that we are the circumcision. We are the one that's circumcised, not from our foreskin, but we are circumcised in our hearts. Mm -hmm. We, my dears, have to be circumcised in our hearts. We need to be circumcised. In our hearts. We we need flesh, the the stuff that hinders us from God to be cut away in our hearts. Oftentimes you find men, women, boys, and girls who, who have heart problems. And when they have spiritual heart problems, they need Jesus to circumcise their hearts. Look at what Paul says. Paul says that, that we are the circumcision who worship God in spirit, rejoice in Jesus Christ, and have no confidence in the flesh. We are the circumcision. We are the ones who have been circumcised in our heart. Our hearts have been changed. I used to, When I was growing up, I used to hear the senior saints say it like this. They said, when I looked at my hands, my hands looked brand new. When I looked at my feet, my feet did too. Now, let me tell you, they still had the same wrinkled hands. <laughs> they still had the same crusty feet. But what they were saying was, I've been changed in my heart, so it has revealed itself on the outside, so much so that I don't do the same things with my hands and my feet because my heart has been changed. <laughs> when, when we look at our local churches today, we need people with changed hearts. Yes, Their hearts need to be changed. You can always tell when a person has not been changed is when they act like they haven't been changed. They think like they haven't been changed. They walk like they haven't been changed. They carry themselves, they carry themselves as if they haven't been changed. See, when your heart has been changed, you've been circumcised in your heart, some things you just won't do. And then those things that come into your mind to do, to do, you'll push that aside by way of the Holy Spirit. He says, who worship God in spirit. We need to worship God in spirit. We need to know that since we've been circumcised in our heart, we have salvation. We trust Jesus Christ as our only Savior. We trust Jesus Christ in the beginning, in, uh, in the part of our sins. When we trust Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ blesses us, and Jesus Christ begins to walk with us, then we're circumcised in our heart. Then we are born again when we believe the story that Jesus died on a skull hill called Calvary, that he was buried in a borrowed tomb, that he rose early that third day morning from the dead, and he was seen by Cephas, then by the 12, and then by over 500 men at one time. The Bible teaches, according to Romans 10, 9 and 10, he says that we need to understand that we believe this story, we are saved. We're on our way to heaven. We're born again. Our hearts have been changed. We have been circumcised. We have been circumcised. Paul says, now we are the circumcision who worship God in spirit, who rejoice in Jesus. We get, we get joy out of Jesus. During this COVID-19 incident, those of us who walk in faith, walk with God, we ought to get joy out of Jesus. Some terrible things are happening. People are dying, but our joy ought to come from Jesus. We ought to get joy out of Jesus. Our hope ought to lie in Jesus. If this thing is going to turn around, it's going to take Jesus. The legislature has shown us that they can't legislate it. The president has told us that he really don't care about it. We got to depend on Jesus. We must rejoice. And when we depend on him, we cause ourselves to rejoice in Jesus. 
we rejoice in him. And have no confidence in the flesh. You know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I watched a young man uh, who passed away the other day. He was built solidly. He, they showed video of him exercising. And, and it showed he had muscles ripping throughout his body. He was built like a, a, a machine. He was perfectly built. Had biceps and triceps popping. One, If he moved his finger, things just popping. Muscles popped throughout his, his body. But he passed away. Sickness ravaged his body. While he looked healthy on the outside, on the inside, he was wasting. He was wasting away. Let me just tell you, you can't have confidence in the flesh. You can't have confidence even in yourself. Your confidence must lie in Jesus the Christ. Paul says, Paul says to this church at, at Philippi, don't put your confidence in any kind of flesh. Don't put your confidence in yourself. Don't put your confidence in any human being. You must put your confidence in Jesus the Christ. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh. See, flesh, flesh gives us something to brag about. Flesh gives us something to boast about. He says, he says, don't you put your confidence in flesh. The next few verses are going to tell us that Paul got something to brag about. He says, though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else think he may have confidence in the flesh, I the more so. Paul says, Paul says now, you know, it sounds like a bunch of guys got together and they just talking trash. Paul says, now if you think you got something to brag about, I got something to brag about. He says, if any of them, if any of you have anything to brag about, I have more to brag about than you do. He says, I more so. And then he began to lay out his resume. He began to lay out the things that gives, that give him something to brag about. Look at what Paul says. Paul says, I have the more. Verse number five, he says, I was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin. I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. And concerning the law, I'm a Pharisee. Paul brags about it. He says, he says, now, if any of you have anything to brag about, let me just tell you. And the reason why he could tell them that if you have something to brag about, I'm the one that can brag is because all the stuff that he is listening, listing, all these things that he is laying out before us are what the Jews and the Judaizers bragged about. Look at what he says. He says, now, now I was circumcised the eighth day. You see, on the eighth day, all Jews were to be circ all boy children were to be circumcised on the eighth day, so that confirms that he is a Jew. And he says, not only was I circumcised on the eighth day, I was of the stock of Israel. I'm one of the chosen ones, is what he's saying. He's saying, I am one of the ones that God has blessed. He has not only given me favor, I am one of God's favorites. He says, I'm, I'm not only of, of the stock of Israel, I am also of the tribe of Benjamin. I'm of the tribe of Benjamin. I am, I am not just any old tribe. I'm of the tribe of Benjamin because the tribe of Benjamin was so highly re regarded. The tribe of Benjamin highly regarded of the Israelites because it produced the first king that from, came from the tribe of Benjamin. The first, the first king came from the tribe of Benjamin, and he says, he says, look, I came from the tribe of Benjamin. I have something that I can brag, I can boast, I can talk about that some of you can't even talk about. He says, he says, I'm, I'm out of the tribe of Benjamin, and the first king came out of it. You know how. Whenever, whenever you get a group of guys who, who have gone through 
this this Greek burning sands, as they say, when, when they have crossed the burning sands and, and you have Alpha saying that we are number one and then, then you have Omega saying that we are the strongest one. Then you have the, the Kappa saying that we are the prettiest ones. You have the Sigma saying we are the smartest ones. It, it, it's what Paul is doing here. He's painting a picture that regardless of what you all say and regardless of where you came from, I came from the tribe of Benjamin. I am one of the top-notch Christians here today. My dears, we as Christians can't brag about who we are because whoever we are, regardless of who we are, regardless of where we came from, we would be nothing without Jesus. He says, not only am I of the tribe of Benjamin, I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. He says, I'm out of the tribe of Benjamin, first of all, so you ought to give me some credit. And not only that, I'm a Hebrew of a Hebrew. In other words, I am the model Jew. <laughs> I am a Jew that, that stands above other Jews. I, I am a Hebrew of Hebrew. He just, he's just talking. He's just, he's just giving, he's saying, if anybody has any reason to brag, I got a reason He's talking about walking in the flesh. See, all this is fleshly stuff. And then he says, concerning the law, I'm a Pharisee. You see, the Pharisees knew the law. The Pharisees knew the law well. And concerning zeal, I persecuted the church. Paul was one who, with anyone that was found in the way, Anyone that was found in the way of Christianity, Paul would persecute him. He said, I got the zeal. He says, I'm excited. I'm, I, I get excited about things. I have so much excitement about things that even when I was wrong, I was excited about it. The problem we have today is we have people who was excited when they were on the devil's side. But since they've come on the Lord's side, they cool and suave. You know, I can't do that. I mean, I can't raise my hand, preacher. I can't stomp my feet. I can't say amen. I am too smooth and too cool for that. But when they were on the devil's side, you couldn't beat them doing whatever they did. You couldn't beat them partying. You couldn't beat them drinking. You couldn't beat them smoking. You couldn't beat, you couldn't beat, beat, beat them doing anything that the devil had commissioned them to do. But now that they're on the Lord's side, they're just kind of chilling. It's a dangerous thing when the Christian chills. It's a dangerous thing when those who, who Jesus has rescued, those who Jesus has set on fire, let the fire burn out. Paul says, concerning zeal, I persecuted the church. Concerning righteousness, which is in the law, I am blameless. Paul says, I'm blaming. I mean, concerning the law, I can quote it. Concerning the law, I know it. Concerning the law, I, I know it so well. And, and, and then when, when, it, when you look at the law and what the law calls for, I am blameless. When you look at the law and what the law, the law tells us to do, I've done it. When you look at the law and what the law uh, uh, commissions us to make happen, I made it happen. Paul says, I'm blaming. He says to the Judaizers, he says to the Philippian church, he says to the Jews, you think you got something to brag about. He said, I'm Paul. You know, I'm the Paul. I'm the apostle Paul. I have something to brag about. I was circumcised the eighth day. I'm bragging about it. I'm from the stock of Israel. I have something to brag about. I am of the tribe of Benjamin. I, I am a, a Hebrew among Hebrews. I got zeal in the law. I, I know the law well. I, I, I am in concern in law. I'm a Pharisee. In other words, I am one of the ones who really know what the law is all about. Those first five, five, five books of the Bible, I know them well. The Torah, I know it well. It says, I know the Torah so well 
until I can brag to you about it. Not only that, Paul spoke several languages well. Paul says, if, if there's any bragging in the flesh, I have something. I got something to brag about. And concerning this same law, look at my resume. I'm blameless. Paul said all that to say, you can't depend on the flesh. And the Judaizers and the Jews were depending on fleshly means to be born again for salvation, to be justified for justification. You see, justification is when Jesus steps in and he imputes righteousness in us. We are not righteous. None of us, no, not one of us are righteous. Jesus imputed righteousness in us. Jesus considered us righteous. Jesus made us righteous. Jesus imparted righteousness in us. We are nothing more than filthy, filthy rags at our very best, but because of Jesus, we are one of God's favorites. Because of Jesus, we are God's favorite. Because of Jesus, we walk with God, and God hears from us as we speak to him through Jesus. And that's what verse number seven says. But what things were gained to me? He says, I'm bragging about this. I'm, I'm just reciting my resume. But those things that was gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. That's the good news of the whole, the whole pericope right there is that he says that those things that I listed ahead of time, the things that I talked to you about, he says, beware of dogs because these dogs are false prophets. These dogs believe in mutilation in order to be saved. These dogs, now he's calling these men dogs because it was a common thing of that day. False prophets, liars on the Lord. He says, beware of evildoers, men that pass this gospel around that's really not the real gospel. That's why Paul says, if any man comes to your house and teach or preach any gospel other than the gospel of Jesus Christ, don't even let him in the door. If any man does not receive the gospel of Jesus Christ from you, shake the dust off your feet and go to the next house. He says, all this stuff that I just told you about is fleshly stuff. It's bragging stuff. It's not even good enough for good conversation. Verse 7, he says, but what things were gained for me? All this stuff was gained for me. I spoke several languages. I'm a Jew. I am, I was circumcised. I'm a Hebrew of Hebrew. I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. I'm from a special group. But then he says, but what things were gained for me? These have I counted loss for Christ. Regardless of who you are, regardless of how much you've accomplished, regardless of what has gone on in your life, Regardless if you, you're in the middle of your retirement, you, you got your retirement change, regardless of what your uh, 403B says, regardless of how much is in your 401K, regardless of how much uh, you have going on where you live, regardless of how, what you drive, all that is fleshly stuff. Paul says everything we gain is just nothing without Christ. He says, I count it loss. I count it loss. I, I give it up for Christ's sake. I, I don't even want to deal with it for Christ's sake. Mm -hmm. Everything that I have accomplished, everything that I have gained, it is loss for the sake of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I count it in another place. Paul says, I count it as dong. Dong is a big old pile of stuff that's useless for nothing. Paul says, I count it as dung. I, it's not even good for, for, for us to do anything but fertilize the ground with. He says, I count everything that I've gained as loss for Jesus Christ. Let me just say to you that today, 
regardless of what you've gained, regardless of where you've come, regardless of what you've done in your life, without Christ, you're just spinning your wheels. Yes. You're just marking time. You're just walking through the valley. The psalmist says, as I walk through the valley of shadows of death, I fear no evil because God is with me. We need God on our side. Our muscles can't get us there. Our degrees won't make it. Our finances won't do. As we look around the world in which we live in today, we got millionaires and billionaires standing in the same line to get toilet paper and food. So money is not the answer. Only Christ is the answer. Paul says, I count all this stuff as lost. God has a way that, that equalizes all of us. When Hurricane Ike came, we were standing in the line to get water and ice. And there was a young man standing in front of me, and he said, you know, I make too much money to be standing in this line. I said, what you mean? He says, I make $50,000 a year. I shouldn't be standing in this line. I said, well, brothers, one thing about it today, there's no place for you to spend your money. So your money means nothing. Yes, Matter of fact, $50,000 is nothing to brag about. <laughs> you can spend that up in a month. I said to him, the only thing that's going to separate you from me and us from them is Jesus the Christ. Your money today, you in the matter of fact, you're not in the front of the line, you're at the back of the line. Yes. I'm back here and you're right here with me. And you can't afford to get out of the line because you won't have water when you get home, regardless of how much money you have. Yes. I said to him, your money can't even buy you fuel for your, your brand new car. It, it can't buy you, you anything because the gas station has no gas. Let me just share with you today. Everything that you've accomplished, everything that you have gained, you might as well just count it lost for Christ. Yes. Because at the end of the day, whatever you have gained, whatever you have earned, regardless of what you have, let me just tell you, God has allowed an equalizer to show up in COVID-19. Churches are closed. Restaurants are closed. Barbershops are closed. I mean, it's, it's a good time not to have hair. It's a good time not to have to stand in the line to wait till the barbershop opens. It's a good time to, to not have hair where you got to stand and wait on the, the salon to open. Or the, the store you buy the salon products from. The other day, uh, we, we were driving, and we saw this long line wrapped all the way around the building. People were waiting to get, get in to where to buy hair supplies. Yes. Boy, some rough-looking folk around here today. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is God has allowed this equalizer to come on the scene and all of us are on the same level right now. Yes. It reminds me of the foot of the cross. Whenever we stand at the foot of the cross, we all are standing at the same level. Doesn't matter what you have, doesn't matter how much money you have. At the foot of the cross, the ground is level. Jesus Christ is the one we have to look up to see. Yes. You see, it was over 2,000 years ago that Jesus died on Calvary. And everybody at the foot of the cross had to look up to him to be saved. Yes. Even the thief on the cross realized that without Jesus, I'm on my way to hell. Yes. Let me just say to you today, my dears, you're on your way to hell without Jesus. You got to get to the point that Paul got to. He says everything is lost without Jesus Christ. You got to get to a point in your life where you realize that, that your health is no good if you don't have Jesus. Yes. Your car, your ride, your, your home is no good without Jesus. Mm -hmm. This is a good time right now to get to know him. 
The Jesus that died on a skull hill called Calvary. The Jesus that they laid in a borrowed tomb. Yes. The Jesus that got up by the power of the Holy Spirit with all power. He got up by the power of the Holy Spirit. He rose from the dead. The Greek writer says that he was roused from the dead. Yes. He got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. Yes. And when he got up, he was showing us that if you receive him as your personal savior, the same spirit that raised up a dead Jesus can come into your life today. Yes. You can be saved right here, right now. Without a choir, without a, with, without a musician, without a piano, without a keyboard, you can be saved right now. All you have to do is trust Jesus as your savior. Yes. You can be born again right here, right now. You can be born in the spirit. Paul says we worship him in spirit. You can't worship him in spirit unless you receive him as the son of God yes. that died for your sins and rose early that third day morning. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus just as you are. Get to know him for yourself. Every tub must sit on his own bottom. The door is open. You need to get to know Jesus. Get to know him right now. Get to know him in a very intimate way. You need to know Jesus for yourself. If you get to know him, you can avoid going to hell and go to heaven. If you get to know him, if you just trust this story, that Jesus, that Jesus died for your sins. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. And early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. If you can trust this story, you can be born again. And this is, if this is you, just repeat after me and invite Jesus into your life. Would you bow your head with me and repeat after me? Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Lord, thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. We believe if you played that prayer and invited Jesus into your life, we believe that you're born again. Amen. And I recommend the New Beginning Church as your church home. I recommend that you that you inbox me, that you, you let me know that you made a commitment to Jesus Christ and to his church. And we will welcome you to the New Beginning Church. Amen and thank God. Thank you for joining us and thank you for being a part of our broadcast. We thank God for all that he does and all that he has already done. And we want to welcome you to join us on, on every Wednesday and every Sunday. Please join us here at the New Beginning Church as we are praising him and worshiping him. And now it is time to give unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give to the Lord. Amen. It is time to give to the Lord. You can do that online, or you can do that by way of, you can do that by way of the, the cash app. You can do it by way of the cash app. You can get to know Jesus Christ and, and support his ministry here at the New Beginning Church. You can do that here at the New Beginning Church. You can do it by supporting our ministry here at the New Beginning Church. God has, has truly been good to us and, and we thank him for, for what he does and what he's, he's going to do with our ministry and with our lives. And we want to thank God for the privilege of giving back to him. You can give to our cash out and you can find that cash app and give to it. If you would do the cash app of NBC Souls, NBC 
Souls, NBC Souls is cash tag NBC Souls, cash tag NBC Souls. We'll be glad to to accept your your offering by way of NBC Souls. Or you can mail your offering in, and you can mail it in to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. 774 Five, nine. Again, thank you so much for joining us. We enjoyed having you with us. We thank you for being a part of our service. Please come and share with us on Sunday morning. We look forward to, to share with you on Sunday morning at 1045 a.m. Every Sunday morning, 1045 a.m. Also, we have our Sunday school class at 9 a.m., 9 a.m. Our youth and our young people are having Sunday school class online as well as our adults having Sunday school class right here at the stations that you are watching on Zoom, as well as Facebook Live. Thank you so much. And as we leave, I want you to pray for Sister Carolyn Davis, my wife. Pray for her as she prepares for surgery, that God will give her favor, and God will lead and guide those who are in charge medically. Amen? So we want to lift her in prayer. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you do. We thank you for the book of Philippians chapter 3. Lord, we thank you, Father God, that we are, be, we are to be rejoicing. Rejoicing because you're good to us. Rejoicing because you kept us in spite of us. And Lord, we ask you to keep blessing us to rejoice in Jesus Christ. Lord, always bless us to be discerning of your word and those who carry your word and pack your word. Bless us to beware of the false prophets, that we will walk according to your will, that we will not be tossed to and fro by every wind or doctrine. Bless us to walk in your word. And Lord, we ask you to keep us now as we depart from this place and these stations, bless us, Father God, that we will be about your business, that we will walk with you and we will carry ourselves as Christians, that others will see us and realize that it's Christ in us. Yes. And those, Father God, who are caught up on their stuff, I ask you to bless them and count it as lost for Jesus Christ, that Jesus will be first place in their lives. And that Jesus will make a difference in their lives. It's in the strong, mighty, and powerful name of Jesus the Christ we pray and we ask it all. Amen. Thank God. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Please come back and be with us on Sunday morning, 9 a.m. for Sunday school on these same stations, Zoom and Facebook Live. And then 1045, 1045 a.m., 1045 a.m. 10.45 a.m. on Sunday morning for worship service. Someone want to know the cash tag again? Our cash app, cash tag is dollar sign NBC Souls. Dollar sign NBC Souls is our cash tag. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a blessing to the ministry. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Yes, Lord.